office wife. The story of the girl who married her boss and of the girl who took over. Here is Mr. Tressida Bendigo to begin a further chapter of Office Wife. The way things are shaping at the moment, it looks as though I'll be able to start paying a bit more attention to McGuff and get those approach shots working again. Marcia has installed herself back in the firm as Jeff's secretary. The Bronson girl has settled down with Benny Puller. <laughs> Thank heaven she's out of the way. And Pilgrim's doing so well that we look like handling Puller's entire expansion. All I have to do now is uh, find out one way or another how about that chap Barmer, and I won't have a care in the world. Yes, uh, hanged if I know. What of those suspicions of mine were all me I and Betty Martin? Huh. I think we'd better have a word with Glover this morning. Well, I've been here, what is it, um, just over a month. And for the life of me, Mr. Bendigo, I, I can't put my finger on anything out of the way. What happened when Pilgrim came back into the firm and uh, took over Palmer's job? Uh, his own job uh, that Palmer had been doing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Look, sir, Palmer may have spread a little gossip around when the Bronson girl was here. It was pretty widely talked about, and you could put all sorts of constructions on anything that was said. But that's all I can be sure of. What about, uh, well, what about Palmer and that switchboard girl, uh, Millie Moffat, or whatever her name is? Well, if there's any connection, they keep it strictly to themselves and strictly after office hours. Hmm. Palmer ever spoken to you about Pilgrim? Oh, we had a drink together one night, and Palmer does a very good job of posing as a friend of Jeff's. Such a good job that I'm inclined to believe him. Well, it has me baffled, Glover. I've told you all those little things that happened a few months ago, and I'd have sworn they all pointed one way. Someone wanted either to discredit Jeff Pilgrim and the firm through malice, or break up his marriage to my niece. I looked around, and Palmer seemed to be the likeliest prospect. Mm, I'm inclined to think you were mistaken, sir. All right. Well, that's that. How's your counting system? Found any more loopholes yet? Oh, no, the one I told you about. And uh, that brings up a point. Benny Puller's agent at Port Kensington. Uh, what's his name? Uh... Ah, yes. Uh, Mr. Joseph Barker. Huh? What about him? Pilgrim put through a memo the other day that uh, he was to be paid by open check. Oh, I didn't take any notice. Only the first one when, uh, went through this morning, and it's for £1,600. That's rather a lot to put through for cash. And most unusual into the bargain. Uh, who is this fellow Barker? Never heard of him. Shall I look into it? Mm, might be a good idea. But uh, if the memo came from Pilgrim, it must be all right. I'll tell you what. No, I'm on my way out. I'll speak to Jeff myself. You don't want me to check up on Buck or anything? Well, why should you? He's Puller's agent, not ours. Any money we pay him, we charge off to Puller. Forget it. Yes, I'll ask Jeff about it myself. Well, just as you say, Mr. Bendigo. I'll let you know quick enough if he needs any looking into. Bye-bye for now. Well, you're the boss. But wouldn't it be odd if Pilgrim was a lot smarter than you take him for. Uh, do you want me out of the way, Mr. Bendigo? No, 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 no. I don't want a word with Jeff. Uh, what's this about uh, paying Puller's Port Kensington agent by open check? Oh, yes, yes, uh, that. I thought it was a bit slack myself. But when Puller appointed him, he told me that's how he wanted to be paid. You're authorised? Oh, yes. 
Uh, by Puller himself. Uh, this was verbal, I take it. Oh, rather not, sir. I wouldn't let the firm shut out like that without a formal authority. I had a letter signed by Benny Puller. It's done on file. Would you like to see it? Mm hmm. Might be a good idea. Uh, well, I, I, I can see you about that business later, if you like, Jeff. No, it's all right, Palmer. No need to run away. I'll only be a minute. I'll send Timmy down for the letter right away, sir. Oh, look here, Jeff. Uh, if you've had a letter from Puller and we have it filed, there's no need for me to hang about. It'll only take a minute, sir. No, never mind. I don't have to run about checking, if you're satisfied. Um, now what's this chap Barker's address? It's a post office box number, actually. Hmm. Must be a funny sort of business, man. Oh, well. <clears throat> uh, you and Marcia are having lunch with me, aren't you? That's right, sir. Well, oh. see you about one, then. Now, Harry, where were we? Let's see. What's the matter with you? You're looking a bit green around the gills. Uh, there's nothing wrong with me, old boy. When Mr. Bendigo was talking about that letter, I thought you were going to faint or something. Well, if you, you must know, it's a hangover. <laughs> oh, enough said. <laughs> now, what about it next Saturday night? You and Stella, Marcia and me. Is it set? Well, if I can get hold of La Bronson. Um, what's the idea, anyway? Well, Marcia will be having a lot to do with Stella, now that she's my secretary. Uh, and you want her to get used to it sort of thing? Hmm? Yes, I... Uh, I wanted to get along with the girls socially. Stella's not out of her system yet, you know. Will she ever be? <laughs> Don't ask me. Marcia's coming back with some tea in a minute. You want some? No, thanks. Not now. Uh, I'll let you know how I make up with Stella. I'm meeting her for a noggin this evening. Good on him. See you later. Phew. I don't want any more shaves as close as that. So we'd better lead you to the chopping block pretty soon, Jeff, old boy before anyone else takes it into their heads to have a look at that letter. Now look here, Harry. If Jeff wants me to go out with his wife, why can't he ask me himself? Oh, I, I don't know. I suppose he thinks he knows you well enough to dispense with the formality. He can jolly well find someone else to make up his foursome. You know, you're slipping. You're not the same old Bronson. Aren't I? How come? <laughs> a few months ago, you'd have leapt at a thing like this and had Marcia jumping about like a, like an organ grinder's monkey. But not anymore. I know when I've had it. And you needn't go into your old act, Palmer. You can't stir up any more jealousy. So let's talk about something else, shall we? Even shop, if you like. Hmm. What do you want to know about Bendigo's? Well, now that Jeff's concentrating on Benny Puller, what's doing about his other accounts? Are you getting any? Yes, I'm getting Bates Hemingway and uh, Robertson and Archer. That suits me fine, because I can put the hard word on Percy Fleming again. For what? When Jeff was away, they put me up to 1200 a year and bonuses. Did you know? I didn't, actually. Congratulations. Congratulations? <laughs> That'll make me laugh. The moment Pilgrim reappeared, I had to drop most of it again. Back to a lousy thousand. Twenty a week. There are people who'd be glad to get that much. Twenty? Oh, it's peanuts. Anyway, the way things are shaping, I'm going flat out for the extra 200 a year. And don't tell me I'm not worth it. So you're going to ask Fleming for the increase again? Wouldn't you? I have five accounts, all told. And if that's not worth a decent screw, I'll go and dig ditches for a living. Hmm. We had any answers to your letters? What letters? The letters I typed for you the other night, applying for other jobs. You do remember, don't you? Oh, ye yes, 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 of course. Well? Uh, yes. Uh, well, actually, Stella, What I... game are you playing, Palmer? You stood there in my office the other night, telling me a long story about being washed up at Bendigo's and not being able to get away from the place quickly enough. Now you're sticking like glue and asking for extra money. Well, it's, uh, well, well what with one thing and another, you know, the extra cancer... You uh, can't think of a thing to say, can you? 
I had an idea there was something up at the time. And now I'm certain of it. Why did you want to get into my office the other night? Oh, it was the moon. I felt romantic. Don't be funny. What did you want? Oh, stop talking like a fool. I wanted some letters typed, that's all. I'm not talking like a fool, Palmer. And I don't feel like being told I am. Now look, Stella, are we going to have a fight over this? If it was too much for you to type a couple of letters at nine o'clock at night, why didn't you say so at the time? This is becoming a bore. I'm not keeping you. Ah, darling, do have some sense. I changed my mind about leaving when they gave me the two new accounts. Nothing more, nothing less. Well, what's it to be? Are you going on with this nonsense, or are you going to forget it? Actually, Stella, I've never seen you mad with the suspicions before. Let's forget it. Am I wrong, really? Completely and utterly. Oh, well. Sorry. Say no more. I wish you'd change your mind about doing the town on Saturday night with Jeff and Marcia. Are you terribly keen on it? Oh, why not? All right, then. It's a date. Ah, now you're talking. I'll phone Jeff tonight so he can book us a table somewhere in reasonably good time. Mm-hmm. What's on your mind uh, at the moment? Well, I'm thinking about tonight. Are you doing anything? No. Uh -huh. Oh, come round to the flat, then. I'll cook you a flounder a la Bronson with sauce tartare. And if you ask very nicely, I might even find you a drink. Why, Stella, this is so sudden. If we'd had any sense, we'd have done it before. Instead of getting ourselves tangled up with people out of our reach. Don't you think so, Harry? Come along, let's go. get the truth out of you one way, Palmer, I'll get it another. You were in my office that night for a very special reason. And if it's the last thing I do, I'll find out what it was. <laughs> Knowing you, dear boy, it shouldn't be too difficult. We invite you to listen to further episodes of Office Wife, written by L.J. Hardy, a Donovan Joyce production.